Here we are on our newly installed WordPress website for our business called Dream in Retro. And right now it's pretty plain, obviously because it doesn't have any content in it whatsoever, and we haven't done anything to customize the design. And typically that's where most people start when installing WordPress for the first time. However, it's actually pretty important that you double check a couple of settings that are inside of your WordPress dashboard first before proceeding with actually building the site itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into the dashboard of our website and this is some place that most people have a little problem right off the bat is how do I get into the dashboard? So all we need to do is go up to our address bar of our browser where our URL is located and because we are on the home page of our site it says dreaminretro.com this is the root level or the main domain for our site all we need to do is go to the very end here and add the words wp-admin this will take you directly to the dashboard of your website if you don't have a link to it already so if you're ever confused about how to get there that's how you do it and because we have not logged in yet we'll need to log in for the first time once you've added your credentials all we need to do is click on login to log into our WordPress dashboard and here we are inside of the dashboard of our new WordPress site. As you'll notice here on the left hand side we have our main navigation which has several different areas of the site that we're going to be investigating soon. However we're going to skip straight to the section that says settings and we're going to click on the triangle to the right to expose all of those options. The first option is the general settings so we're going to click on that to view our general settings for the site and this is where you would add your site name which we currently have set for us already by the installer as well as our tagline which right now is just the generic tagline for the site we're gonna go ahead and change that to reflect the actual tagline that we would like to have for our website also we see that we have an email address and this is the notification email that we will receive anytime someone does something on our WordPress site like leaves a comment for example. Further down below that we'll definitely want to set the time zone for our blog. This means that when you actually create a blog article the timestamp that it has will be correct for the area where you're located. By clicking on this drop down menu you can see we have several different options for the universal time code. However it's probably easiest if we just do a search based on a city close to us and in this case we happen to live pretty near to Los Angeles so we're gonna select that as our time zone below that is the date and time formats which the defaults are fine in this case however if you'd like to have a different format you can definitely set those here as well as the day of the week that you would like to start on we're pretty happy with the defaults except for the few changes we made so we're gonna click on the save changes button to save those settings Next we're going to take a look at the options for writing. And one thing that's really good to change here very quickly is the size of the post box. Currently it's set to 10 lines and this is the box that you see when you're actually creating and editing your posts or your pages. And 10 lines can be a little confining for most people so we'd like to change this one immediately to 25 lines just to give us a little bit more space. The rest of the defaults for this page are OK, so we're going to leave them as they are and click on Save Changes. And next we're going to take a look at the Reading section of our site. This section allows us to control what page is displayed on our home page, as well as how many blog posts are going to be shown on our actual blog page itself. Now in this case, the front page is set to display our most recent blog posts. However, in a future video, we're going to come in here and we're going to change this setting so that we have a traditional home page and the blog is located on another page called blog. We're also going to change this setting so that instead of showing 10 blog posts on the main blog page, we're going to set it to a more reasonable six posts. Any posts over six will be paginated, so at the end of the page, you'll have a button you can click on to view older posts. The rest of the defaults are okay the way they are, so we're going to click on Save Changes here. And from here we're going to skip immediately to the privacy settings for our WordPress site. 
This is a very simple page, but it's probably the most important page on your site because it controls whether search engines can see your site or not. And we can see here under site visibility that by default we have it selected to block search engines from viewing our site. Most auto installers that put WordPress on your host for you, such as the one we used in previous videos, will automatically have this option checked for you. And this is great when you want to work on your site and begin its development early without having search engines crawl your site. So for the moment we're going to leave this uh, as it's set to block the search engines. However, it's important to come back to this page when we actually launch our site because we would like to make the site visible to everyone and so at that time we're going to change the setting here. But for the moment we're going to make no changes to this. I just wanted to point out this page because as I said it's a very important page on the site. The last setting we're going to address before moving on to actually customizing our site is permalinks. Permalinks are the URL structure of your actual website itself. Basically what URL are your blog articles going to be at? And you can see here that it has a default setting and an example of what that looks like. And in this case it's not very good to leave it at the default setting because your URL tends to contain a random series of letters and numbers. What we'd like to do is we'd like to have a structure that includes the name of the post in the actual URL to take advantage of some of the keywords that we're going to be using when we actually write our articles for our blog. In that case all we need to do is come down here and select the custom structure option for our website. And once we've selected that we need to enter a particular code and this will look a little bit confusing because it does contain a couple of extra characters which tell WordPress what to do. So just know that all you need to do is copy down this string with a slash, percentage mark, post name, and then another percentage mark and a closing slash. And what this is going to do is this is going to make sure that the actual titles for our blog posts are going to become the URLs of the post itself. Once we've done that, we don't need to make any more changes to this, so let's go ahead and save our changes. And as simple as that, we've addressed most of the major settings to our site. We will cover these again in more detail in future videos, but when first starting out a website, these are the options that you want to make sure to double check very quickly before proceeding with any more work to your site, just to make sure that everything is the way that it needs to be.